Well, hello, everybody out there in Fishland. The music is stopped, and it is now time to start the first ever Dre Cafe. That's right. Dam Removal Europe is putting together a series of these fish-related or fish-flavored get-togethers that are supposed to have a little bit of a different feel than your typical Zoom meeting, presentation, conference. We all love those. We're all fish and river nerds out here, and nobody loves a conference more than me. But sometimes it's good to kick back a little bit, maybe be a little, little less formal. I don't wear fish hats all the time, but I think the Dre Cafe is a good time for your fish hat. So hopefully everybody out there is tuned in, has got themselves a beverage, whether or not you have a sturgeon mug, I don't know, that's up to you, um, and is ready for a different kind of presentation. So the Dre Cafe is meant as a way to do some professional sharing, to get to, get to meet each other, but to do so in sort of bite-sized bits. Let's see what's going on around the world in all of our different places that we are um, and just sort of get a, get a flavor for who's doing what where. And sure, we may not get all the details done, but this is really just a great way to kind of basically invigorate ourselves, right? Renew ourselves in the work that we're doing by getting inspired by what's going on around the world. So I'm going to be your host today. My name is Chris Bowser. Most people just call me Bowser. And uh, I work on the Hudson River in New York State, USA, putting together programs that hopefully engage uh, students and the general public in community science around migratory fish and restoring our rivers. So like many of you, I'm passionate about fish, but I'm also passionate about people. So that's what today is all about, is bringing people and rivers and fish all together. And we hope that you really enjoy this series here. Now, you may have noticed already that many of you are muted. Um, that's just to, so that we don't hear the backgrounds of kids and dogs and birds and cars and everything running around. It's not meant to, to make you quiet, quite the opposite. In fact, we really want to have people engaged in this process. Um, so we're going to have a couple of ways that people can do that. Uh, uh, and they're going to be they're going to be manipulated or they're going to be uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, guided, curated, we'll say, by my good colleague, uh, Nija. She is going to be connecting with us in a couple of different ways. Hello, Nija. One of those ways is occasional uh, Mentimeter polls. We'll get to that in just a minute. Um, you can also put questions in the chat box. So please use that chat box, put your comments, put your, put your questions, share your email, whatever you want to do in that chat box, go for it. And then um, you may want to pay special attention today because for all of you type A competitive people, there will be a Mentimeter final quiz at the end of the program. So yeah, if you need a homework assignment to keep you engaged, you've kind of got that too, all right? Now, um, to get into this Mentimeter, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Nija for, for a moment to have our first icebreaker poll, which is to get a sense of where everybody is right now, whether that's your town, your watershed, your river, your country. Um, we, wanna see, we wanna see where is everybody right now? So Nija, what should people be doing? So I already posted in chat box. Um, you go, you all go to the, uh, um, <laughs> to the website, minty.com. You can see it in a chat box. You can just copy it. And there's also a code you enter to the pool and there's a question for you, you answer it and then we check the results and see, do we have more Germans? Do we have US running? Who's the first? Ooh. Where are you all joining us from? Oh, I like this, I like this. So people should be doing this right now, right? Oh, I also like, I, I think that's cool to put that in the chat box too. Yeah, it's ah, this is great. very convenient. <laughs> Oh, this is great, Nija. What do you, oh, excellent. Thanks for sharing that. Oh, what do we got here? 
Oh, Netherlands. Netherlands and Finland. God, all right. That, that, excellent. Oh, Wales, beautiful. Austria. Oh, my gosh. We got people from all over. Go Cali. Right on, USA. I guess I should put that in there, too. I'm, I'm representing New York today. Wow, look at that. Beautiful. We've got people from all over. Maine, one of my favorite states. Romania, Slovenia, Lithuania. Thank you all for coming in from all over Europe and all around the world. This is fantastic. We love seeing all these people. Hello, Sylvia from Portugal. Thank you very much for saying hello. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Going back, thank you so much for joining us from Slovenia. This is superb. We really, really, really uh, appreciate everything that you're doing. We really appreciate the World Fish Migration Foundation for being a huge part of this. We really, we're really trying to um, uh, 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 support dam removals all across Europe and really all across the world. So that's really what the Dre Cafe is strongly about. Um, Nija, do you want to say anything else about, about the Mentimeters, about our sponsors, anything else like that you want to share? At this stage, I'll only share that there are a couple of more uh, Mentimeters, so stay tuned, be with us till the very end, and yeah, about the sponsors and all that, that comes at the end, huh? <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. One other thing, if you haven't put where you are in the chat box yet, I'm always interested in what people consider their rivers, their water bodies, their oceans or watersheds. So I, I, I wanna also hear, what do you consider your river? Either where you work, where your heart is, if you're lucky, it's both. Um, it's just great to, oh, awesome. We've got uh, Saeed from, uh, from Iran joining us. Ah, oh, Donald from Ireland. This is outstanding. So I love seeing those waterways come in because that's really what we're all here for. And frankly, what we're kind of all about. So it's fantastic. Um, one of the main reasons for doing this cafe is to hear from some of you all around the world doing great work, right? Because sometimes, boy, boy, sometimes it feels like you're just a fish bumping your head against a concrete wall, right? And sometimes it's nice to hear that, wait, there is progress. There is a light shining through the crack in that dam. Um, and so we're gonna hear from a couple of different people throughout this morning. The first person we're gonna hear from is Samsa Bilhunin. And Samsa, right off the bat, I apologize if I got your name wrong. This goes for everybody. Um, Samsa is the Director of Marine and Freshwater Environments for the World Wildlife Federation in Finland. And we have, we have some good participation from Finland today. I'm going to say thanks to Samsa for that. Um, in the last five years, WWF Finland has been involved in the removal of 43 migration barriers. Think about that. 43 barriers in five years that has opened 1,000 kilometers of new free running rivers. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. Some of these barriers have been culverts. Some of these have been old mill dams, but some of these have also been hydropower barriers. So Samsa, I would love it if you could introduce yourself and, and we're, I'm particularly interested in not just the removal of, of older obsolete barriers, but the fact that you've also made progress with hydropower barriers, that is very fascinating. So Samsa, what to uh, say hello, please correct me if I got anything wrong and tell us about this amazing work. Oh, thank you for the introduction. I actually, I have to be sorry, I'm sorry that I missed the hat part, so. But I, I happen to have my uh, fly fishing cap with me, so maybe I'll just put put that on. Makes me feel at home by the river. So actually, it's 45 uh, barriers that we've removed already. So it was 43 when we gave the information, I think, to you. But uh, thank you for the invitation. And then uh, right away to your question about uh, how is it possible that we are also targeting already active hydropower plants in Finland. 
to say that we, of course, started WWF Finland, I'm meaning we started with very small barriers uh, five years ago, but currently we are in a situation and circumstance that where public money combined with private funds like WWF uh, funds can in fact be used by buying off active hydropower plants. And uh, not just any plants. So these are very typically those that have either environmental or technical investments in coming in the in the next couple of years. And uh, it can be more or equally attracted, attractive than for some of the companies to escape these investments by selling off that power plant. I, I hope you get the logic. And, Absolutely. Uh, so this can even help the companies to have economically more healthy portfolio, hydropower portfolio in the future when the least productive part is sold away. And I see it as a win-win solution. So the reverse win and the companies are not losing too much either. And um, another thing is flexibility in, in Finland. I mean, in the system that NGOs can suggest, for example, government that where, you know, they should be putting money together with uh, uh, private funds. And then government is targeting, I mean, contacting uh, hydropower companies directly. And then the companies are already contacting government and us, you know, so it's very kind of um, good collab collaboration in a way. And crucial last thing about this that makes this possible is that at the very si same time we uh, phased off or kind of stopped almost completely the hydropower subsidies, so subsidizing hydropower. So then refurbishment of uh, existing hydropower plants that come, for example, old, it's not that easy anymore. And more easy is maybe the dam removal part of it. Mm. Now, Samsa, uh, really quick, just I, I, I was you, that you 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 spoke very well about the sort of what the the the, the corporate or the company perspective is, but just really briefly on both the governmental perspective, but also the public perspective. So, how is this linked to the government, but also how has this been received by the general public? Yeah, indeed, uh, Finland has dam removal now in our national plan explicitly mentioned since three years now. And uh, what is very interesting at the moment, actually, at very this moment is that there's a lot of discussion how to compensate for phasing out the import of Russian energy to Finland, for example. And hydropower is not mentioned in this in these discussions on the parliament level pretty much at all. And uh, this wouldn't have happened like some years ago, but now it, it now it's going like this. And what I think is the reason for this is that not only we have dam removal in our uh, governmental plan, national plan for Finland, but I think we have truly achieved uh, a real paradigm shift in how people perceive rivers and the value of rivers. So in, instead of destroying, we are really on the path of restoring now. And then we are kind of people of common sense, we like to think in Finland, that if you're already building down from one end, I mean, uh, building down dams, then you're not definitely going to build more at the other end. So we have kind of chosen the path already, I would say. This is beautiful. And, and we want to, we actually want to show people a, a great case study of this. So we're going to actually check out a video at a removal site of one of these amazing case studies where an active hydropower dam was removed. I think I think late last year, um, I, I'm going to get this wrong, but I think this is the uh, Hitola Joki River. And, and I probably butchered that name, but luckily our good friend Hannah is going to be able to tell us the right pronunciation where we're hoping that Hannah can join us from the site. Hannah, by the way, while we're getting this, this video started up, uh, Hannah is the CEO of the South Karelian Foundation for Recreational Areas. Um, the, uh, the cities and municipalities of South Karelia in Finland uh, decided to start acquiring and implementing camping and recreation areas. So there again, Sampa, that's that sort of public perspective that's in there. Um, first in Lake Saima and then uh, in other places in and around these power plant areas. So, um, Hannah, I don't know if you're there waiting for us and if you can hear us and if you can help me with the pronunciation that I just butchered on the, what I'll call the H River in Finland. Here I am, can you hear me? 
Hey, Hannah, how are you? Can you just tell us your name and the name of the river you're on right now? Uh, hello, I am here. I'm Hannah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you just fine. I'm going to give okay, you two thumbs up. You. Yes, uh, I'm Hannah Olivan. I'm from the uh, Health Charity and Foundation for Recreation Areas. And I am at River Heagle and Yoki. And Hannah's was in Rapids. Outstanding. Hannah, uh, I know it's been about nine months since this dam was removed. Have you ever, have you seen any improvements in these last nine months? I know it's, I know that's a pretty short time frame, but have you seen any differences in, in anything at all so far? Yes. Uh, the main proven improvement and result is, of course, the new spawning area for landlocked salmon from Lake Ladova. Uh, there were found already five spawning uh, areas uh, or grounds last autumn above the uh, former dam. And that's great. That's the main result and the main target, of course. Uh, but also the second the side uh, target was to uh, arise interest uh, for the river and the three rapids and um, also that has come through there have been uh, a lot of visitors here at Kangas Koski even even too many last autumn uh, at construction sites but now uh, all the viewing uh, sites are uh, ready and safe for visitors, of course, we welcome. That is outstanding. We enjoy. We can see the river running free behind you. That looks yes. like a good spring freshet. Yes. Um, yes. I is hear where the, yeah, where the dam was, and exactly at the former dam, what is left. Oh, beautiful. Your colleague uh, Sini is also putting in some great stuff in the chat box. Some some details. I got to ask you. Is is your work there done? Is this river completely free now? Are you are you done, or is there more to do? Uh, not yet totally free. We have uh, still two more power plants to stop, and two more dams to remove. Uh, also, those are owned by our foundation, and we are preparing the, the demolition project. Wow. Geez, congratulations. You should be so proud of this work. I have to tell you, just from my perspectives and, and the work that I've done, the ability to, to have this partnership between corporations, hydropower companies, government, the public, people who love and want to enjoy rivers, this is, this is just one of those trifecta holistic victories that uh, is a real inspiration. And uh, Hannah, I want to thank you. I want to thank Sini and I want to thank SAMHSA for just giving us some fantastic Finland examples of dam removals in Europe. I really, well done and congratulations to some great, great work. Uh, one of the things I loved about your example was you really lean in, leaned into the general public, public attitudes, public needs for recreation, for fishing, all of these different things. And I think that one of the great things about Dam Removal Europe and the World Fish Migration Foundation is that recognition that we want to be, have a big tent that brings people together. And for those of you who may be logged on a little early, you may have noticed we have many members, Herman most especially, who really loves music. Music is a tool to communicate, Music is a tool to inspire. Music is a, as a tool to really make people feel good or think about what they're doing. We are very, very lucky to have a short musical break today um, from Cesar, who is the executive secretary of the only nationwide NGO in Spain that is focused on protecting and restoring rivers. I'm talking about the association for the study and improvement of Salmonids River with Life, Rios Convida. Uh, this organization started in 1979 
as a, an association of fishermen, people who like to go out and fish. Um, and since then, they have taken to court many cases of dams with legal problems, pushed for their removal. So we have policy, we have science, but it's also important to remember, Cesar is a guitar player, and he's going to join us today with two wonderful songs, including one right now. Take it away, Cesar. Hello. Good afternoon. and play for my students and play for our volunteers. I think we need, we need some more of that here. Thank you so much. Oh, Gracias, Cesar. Cesar, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, we're gonna hear from Cesar later, but, but, oh my gosh, breaking news. Nija, pow, you guys are breaking in with some, with some, with some serious news. What's going on? What, what, why are we interrupting this program? One second. Are you ready? I can hardly wait. Are you ready? Are you ready? Heck yeah, we're ready. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we stop our program to share some exciting news. Dam removal is booming in Europe. We have received inside information that Dam Removal Europe will soon release their annual report. At least 239 barriers were demolished last year in 17 countries across Europe, said main author. The annual report is planned to be published next month. Coming next, connected rivers. That's the theme of an upcoming international seminar on dam removal in Europe. This is the seventh seminar on this topic and it will take place in Lisbon, Portugal from May 19th to May 21st. It is expected more than 30 speakers from Europe and USA. And they will talk about funding mechanisms, current policies, safety issues, and more. This event is supported by the Portuguese Environmental Agency and the National Laboratory for Civil Engineers based in Lisbon. Following, for the first time in European history, an award will be given to a dam removal project. The winner will receive 10,000 euros and will be announced during the Connected River Seminar in Lisbon. The award is hosted by the Dam Removal Europe Coalition World Fish Migration Foundation, WWF, the European Investment Bank and supported by the Dutch Postcode Lottery. Coming up next, an update on a major removal project that is on its way. Saloon River in France, it is one step closer to be free flowing once again. La Rouge Bois Dam Reservoir will start being the water at next May 16. This is a crucial step towards the demolition of this 100 years old dam. This project will be follow up to the dismantling of a 36 meter high dam that took place upstream in 2019. And finally, the European Open Rivers Program officially supports 19 small dam removals across 11 countries that will open up close to 400 kilometers of rivers in Europe. Included in these interventions are the first ever barrier removals in Latvia and Slovenia. Thank you very much and good evening. That is fantastic. 
Pow, I could listen to your breaking news all day. <laughs> that was outstanding. Sorry, for Thank you, Pow. Well, wow, there was a lot of stuff in there. If somebody doesn't mind putting in a few of those highlights in the chat box, just to, just so people can remember it, especially that that great connected river stuff. Um, we'll put about put a little bit there. Yes, cloudy with a chance of dam removal. I like that. I like that forecast. Um, we've got another great uh, uh, couple of speakers to tell us about some awesome, awesome progress in the Republic of Lithuania. Once again, I'm going to butcher no names. And once again, I'm hoping that people will help me out with that. We're first going to hear from Jone, uh, who is uh, an advisor for free flowing river restoration in sustainable development and strategic change in the Ministry of the Environment in the Republic of Lithuania. Wow, you are doing a lot with making legislative changes and making dam removals easier. Um, Jonay, it sounds like your job was 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 created only recently. How did uh, how did that happen, and what are you trying to do? Uh, so yes, it was created only in autumn 2020. So I only been working in the ministry for a year and a half. And uh, the, the position was created uniquely for restoring the river restoration, uh, restoring rivers. And uh, there's been a lot of will. Uh, politicians wanted to remove dams, but there was just like no, no way. Uh, there was all possible uh, problems and uh, no one really knew how to get around them. So they understood that they need a person dedicated for this cause, and that's what happened. That's how I became an advisor in the ministry. Oh, that cool. First of all, congratulations on your position. And we are very, very happy that you're joining us today, and you're there for Lithuania. Um, it sounds like uh, you had some great progress uh, in the summer 2020 with the Brazil Weir um what's the what was what was what was what's the story with that with that uh, uh barrier removal so lithuania was very lucky uh we had an activist uh nature conservation specialist and uh, from a non-governmental organization uh for conservation and uh, she brought the topic of dam removal in uh, in lithuania so without her we would have been uh uh, I don't know, maybe 10 years behind. So she really brought us uh, the topic and she was the, the first person to remove the dam together with the organization. And uh, she really put the idea of dam removal in everyone's heads, in the politicians' heads and, uh, and people's heads. And now she's really uh, like starting, starting the fire. So it's really, it really started from that person and this exact dam. So we really saw that a small dam like that can make a big change. And we already see that the nature is already recovering. We see uh, trout spawning just above uh, where the river, uh, where the dam was. So it's it's beautiful. It's really amazing what one impassioned person can do. How sometimes you know that 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 seed of a person is really amazing. What that one person can do. And yes, Herman Wan again. I'm looking at you. Um, and uh, speaking of, 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 of people and individuals that are involved in this work, um, to kind of provide a comparison, Jone, to the project you were just talking about, I want to bring in your colleagues, uh, Irma and Antanas. And Irma and Antanas, I don't know uh, uh, who wants to answer this question, but I understand that, um, hello. I understand that you guys had another dam removal this past summer in Salantai that was quite a bit different than the Brazil um, removal. Can you just sort of compare and contrast those two projects? Yes, uh, I'm, and greetings from uh, Salantai River. Uh, I'm at the moment standing in the middle of the river. You can me see. Uh, and uh, before me, it was one year ago, a uh, big dam almost a four meters high uh, spillway of ice. And uh, the main difference is, uh, was uh, the, the size, also uh, the uh, impact on landscape levels after dam removal. Uh, that uh, uh, Sante Dam was a fully functional structure uh, that can, uh, that structure was almost uh, uh, 
my doctors uh, of artificial egg that leg was used by locals of Zalde. Fantastic. These pictures are outstanding. And I love that you're out there at the site of the room. We can really literally see the before and after right here uh, as we're watching this. I'm going to. Um, another difference it's um, we removed them in the uh, 21 of uh, September. And uh, the project is not uh, finished yet. Uh, the, at the moment, we are cultivating the pound territory. So it's, uh, and it's much longer in uh, time frame. So. Beautiful. That's actually a really good comparison um, uh, between the two. Uh, Jonea or Antones, or both of you, what, what was sort of the, um, what, ha what has been the sort of opinion of, of of local people or of other people in Lithuania to this burial removal? What has been sort of the reaction that you've gotten from these efforts in the last two years? And Jonay, uh, I guess I'll, okay, go ahead, Antonis. The idea of this project was born in 2017, so we uh, tried to have some time in the way how the river restores itself and became more vibrant uh, in flow. And the most positive feedback that we get are uh, mostly from uh, various types of society and uh, people that are quite impressed in, uh, quite interested in environmental protection. Uh, for example, uh, anglers are, are very positive about this dam removal. Also, the locals that remember uh, free flowing sound the river before uh, sound way down are quite uh, positive about this change in sound the river and uh, and I think uh, shortly, uh, everything. Antanas, I'm going to interrupt you just for a minute because it's really hard to hear you. And I'm, yes. I just want I want to turn it over to your colleague uh, Jone. Jone, any any before we move on to our next uh, guest, any last words that you would like to share? Any advice or any words of encouragement for people all over Europe who are trying to do what you're doing? Well, from uh, from a country that uh, experienced uh, the dam removal is a curse word where no one really wants to hear. In in only a few years, we got to to remove dams and already have plans to remove more. We're already prioritizing, so you only need to find one Carolina to to spark <laughs> the whole thing. And then really you unionize uh, people from different institutions that like really uh, get the flow and uh, everything will go naturally after that. That is really outstanding advice. And thank you, Jone. Thank you, Antanas. Thank you to your colleague, Irma, for all the great work that you are doing. And congratulations on just making some awesome progress. Um, speaking of, of, of great people and that passion, I was really happy to meet right before the call uh, our next speakers, or at least meet them via Zoom, uh, Monica and Albert. Uh, both of them work for the Catalan Water Agency. Okay, so now we're moving from Lithuania to Spain. Um, they're responsible for river and water management uh, in the river basins that are entirely within the Catalonia region uh, and not shared with other regions. They've been doing a lot of barrier removal since they started several years ago. And uh, we'd like to hear a little bit more about them. So Monica and Albert, could one of you please um, just tell us a little bit 
about your agency and, uh, and when and why you started to remove barriers. Hello, Chris. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, yes, from the Catalan Water Agency, we are working to improve uh, the, the status of the, of the rivers. Uh, in, and we've been working for many years to improve the river connectivity. Initially, main efforts were focused on the construction of fish passes, but it was in 2017 that we start to work in an internal working group uh, to push the removal of obsolete structures. In this internal group, we study case by case from the environmental point of view, administrative and sec of security also point of view, and we decide the better option to remove the, the obstacle. We have a lot of work to do because we, we have more than 1,100 obstacles recorded in our Catalan River Basin District. More than 300 of these obstacles are not in use. Uh, and most of them are below five meters high. And it's been difficult for us to start working on these and, and to bear fruits. But in last years, we've successfully removed 11 structures, two of them last year. You will see some pictures. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, Albert, I have a question for you. So did I just hear, Monica, that, that you've had over 300 dam removal or barrier mitigations? Yes, uh, it is. Wow. All right, Albert, a question for you. I know I, 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 we don't want to play favorites, but we're going to. Do you, Albert, do you have a favorite barrier mitigation that you were part of? Yes, we, we have one is in, in the Pyrenees. It's located in the Pyrenees. It's, we call the Muyo Dam. Uh, it, it was the first uh, dam, well, a small big dam that we were removing. Um, uh, this is uh, located in, in, in the Retort River, which is a typical Mediterranean mountain river. And that dam was not used then for many years and then uh, started to be filled with sediment. We were estimating that around 6,000 know, cubic meters of material was stored behind the dam. Um, the dam itself has more or less eight meters height and it was uh, around 250 meters long. And in 219, we had to, the opportunity to remove this dam. And in September of that year, we started to, to remove uh, the, the barrier. Then uh, the works were made during two months and a half, more or less, and mainly consisted on eliminate uh, all the fixed structures. It means the, the wall of the dam, the diversion canal, and some other elements, as well as we were digging more than 50% of the total sediment accumulated in the reservoir. We, we decided to, to dredge all, all this sediment because we had afraid uh, that a moderate float uh, could produce a massive entrance uh, of sediment and uh, create some, some severe impacts of down the street in the ecosystem. Uh, it's because we had not experience in this kind of, of river. It was the, the, the first time. Um, as well, we, we, we make a, a monitoring program just to evaluate the, the evolution of the river in, in terms of geomorphology as well in the ecology. And we can say that after one year of the remove the, the barrier, the river was uh, in a great shape. The morphology was completely restored as well. The ecosystem was, was really nice. And we are really happy about that. That's beautiful. That is fantastic. Well, that's, that is a great thorough story. I love that. Um, and 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 it's that it's great that you're tracking all of the 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 the, the ecological indicators, the sediment tracking, looking at the thalweg, looking at stream profiles. That is some great, great thorough information, and much appreciated. Um, in my notes, I have a strange comment here, and I'm not even sure what to make of this. So one of you is going to have to help me out. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read it as I have it in my notes. Uh, 
you guys are going to use zip lines. That's right, zip lines to get debris and riprap, uh, to get out the debris and riprap of a weir removal. Who came up with this idea and what are you talking about? Oh, uh, well, Chris, this is true. It, uh, this is a um, small all gold um, gauge station that is in the Gaia River, in the, in the Tarragona area. And there the, the, the river is, is is flowing in a very narrow valley with the a very steep slopes and of, of rocks, and in this at that area there are some very highly protected environments, and we were uh, analyzing uh, how to do that uh, for not create a, a high impact on, on these habitats, and then we were uh, evaluating the idea to, to, to use these uh, zip lines. The day was coming from the, the enterprise that it's it has to be the it has to make this this works, um, and then uh, as well because uh, the volume of the material that we have to of the the debris that we have to to carry out is very low. It's an, uh, around ninety six cubic meters of of debris, and then we can use some manual uh, techniques uh, to 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 eliminate that. Uh, but we are not sure about that if we can finally use the zip lines because the, the, the walls, the rock walls are not quite stable. And we have afraid that maybe we cannot anchor these this zip lines. And then as well, we are right now evaluating the, the idea that maybe take off the, the debris by helicopter. This uh, <laughs> one idea. Uh, we are evaluating right now the, which one is the best options and the possibilities. And in the next weeks, we will take the final decision because wars has to start uh, next June. Dedication. That's <laughs> what we like to see. <laughs> Zip lines, helicopters. If you're looking for volunteers, sign me up. I will almost like immediately break myself into pieces probably, but darn it, I'm going to go out in a big way. <laughs> I love that idea. Um, <laughs> Monica, I'm going to ask you a, the similar question that, that, that we asked Jone, and that is, you know, when you look at the work that you've done uh, it, 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 with, with, with Catalonian Water Agency, and you think of like, all right, lessons learned and best practices, what are some, what are some words of advice or, or just or surprises that you've had in your career so far? That you'd like to share with everyone. I think well, there are not nice surprises. The not nice surprises are that the people don't like the the idea of removal of removal all the structures, and this is for us the most difficult thing. So I think that it's very important to have a a, a, a team of people that uh, can support you when you are not. Uh, uh, when when you are not very optimistic, <laughs> so you have people that can help you to, and it's important also to have people working on this uh, participation on in these social areas. We've we've heard uh, about uh, a project in Spain in the Basque Country where they are starting to do this social part with. Uh, making to participate to the people that is against the dam removal works and we think that this is an area where we have to work in the future uh, and is it very important to work on, on this item yeah you know as soon as you started to mention uh people having a negative reaction to barrier removals i saw a bunch of uh, heads slowly nod in slow agreement i there i'm like Oh, there are some stories in this group right here about that. Uh, and I, I, I completely agree with you having attended meetings with various stakeholders and a huge spectrum of opinions about dam removals. But I um, think that the, the team with uh, other people that is working on the same thing in other countries also help us. And these in meetings like this help us also. Oh. Well, that's great to hear. Uh, thank you very much. That's a that's a that's a great that's a great piece right there. And um, 
But before I move on, Albert and Monica, I just want to, I want to thank you for all the work that you're doing, for the creative work that you're doing, for the, for the, I can tell a sense of humor and a sense of uh, enthusiasm behind, really behind all the speakers today, but I'm, I'm looking at you two in particular uh, 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 for just the work that you're doing, and it's really appreciated. Um, thank you. One of the deepest nods from the audience was coming from our next speaker, uh, Julie Torini. I saw, I see her like, oh yeah. And um, by the way, Julie Torini, uh, this is this just to touch on it. She's a graduate from the UC Davis Law School, University of California. UC Davis, if you haven't been there, has one of the most beautiful arboretums that is literally crafted around a waterway. It is absolutely gorgeous in terms of how to correctly use a water feature that combines academic and public uh, accessibility. I'm just putting a shout out for that. But to get to- can, you, I just, can I just also say, that's where I met my husband and that's where we walked along the creek, so. I believe, I believe we like to see? say love flows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so Julie, you're the director of Lands, Rivers and Communities uh, uh, at the Resource Legacy Fund. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, your work with the Resources Legacy Fund, and in particular, the Open Rivers Fund? Oh, sure. Love to do that. And uh, just thanks for the time today. I really appreciate this. And this has been really fun. More, Like you said, like you tried to um, lay out in the beginning, just like more fun than when we normally have in, in doing these things. So, so great job, Chris. Um, so I'm uh, Resources Legacy Fund is a nonprofit based in California, working uh, nationally, mostly in the Western states. Open Rivers Fund is is most is in the Western states, um, but again, centered in California. We also have international um, programs as well. We work in the sort of conservation and environmental space, um, and work really closely with philanthropy to help them. Uh, design and launch and implement their grant and loan programs. Um, and I've I've been here for near 18 years. Uh, it's been a great it's a it's been a great place to sort of you know finalize my career. Um, and um, the Open Rivers Fund is has been a, a, a real joy. This is a 10 year um, program capitalized with a $50 million grant generously provided by the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation in celebration of their 50 year anniversary back in 2016. Their goal was uh, in providing these, this, this grant was, they have been you know, sort of um, involved in traditional conservation for, for many years and continue to be so, but, but really wanted to, to, to find a place where philanthropy had not sort of systematically and strategically engaged. Uh, they, they settled on dam removal and they worked with us to develop a program to really sort of unleash uh, the power of dam removal across the Western states, which is their conservation region of focus. Uh, so we launched in late in late 2016. We very early, uh, very early in our sort of program development process realized that, you know, like many have said, Jone and Monica, to do work in the Western United States on dam removal, there, there are course, curse words that are called, that are, that are dam removal. And it's very sort of, you need to demystify dam removal. So we really mm -hmm. uh, decided to focus on removing obsolete, obsolete dams, dams with no purpose, dams that are really you know, causing problems for local communities of whatever stripe that community may wear. Uh, so we we um, we focused on removing obsolete dams, modernizing water infrastructure, which, as you know from from the news in the Western United States, is a huge need uh, given climate change and drought conditions that will only increase. And then, of course, restoring rivers across the United States. So our program goals are sort of threefold. This is how we do it. We want to, at the end of this program, improve ecological conditions in our Western rivers. We want to create that diverse political and community support for dam removal. We want to demystify dam removal. And, the re and then we also want to build new tools, new policies, new funding, basically momentum to accelerate and continue to the work, continue the work following uh, the 10 year, um, the 10 year program that we're currently running. 
Um, so what are we doing with our investments? We're investing deeply in projects in local communities um, because we wanna prove success uh, with completed projects. The projects are varying in size. We work in watersheds in the Olympic Peninsula on culvert removal. Uh, we work in the Rogue Basin in Oregon on small irrigation dam removals at a watershed level. You know, we're working on medium sized dams uh, for example, the 70 foot high uh, Akutna Dam that was removed in 2018 in Alaska. And we're working on some of the larger ones too, like the Matillaha Dam, which has that iconic, you know, dotted line scissor um, on, um, on, on the face of it in Ventura County in Southern California. So like across the, uh, across the sort of like what a dam does, what the function is, um, and local partners that are on the ground doing the work. We're also very key on uh, resourcing tribes. Um, we have a, you know, a, a, a horrible history in the United States with dams and indigenous communities. So we're very keyed on uh, you know, resourcing tribes to do that work on their lands um, themselves, restore mm -hmm. rivers, remove their dams. Wow. Um, just like one last thing. So to date, so we're now midway through. We are working in 54 watersheds in 12 states, and, and we've invested in 48 dams that have been removed already, looking at 20 more this year. So we're really starting to, you know, it took a little bit to build a portfolio, and now it's sort of like, you know, sort of like a, 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 a really a, a good cadence. We have a lot of projects in the pipeline. Wow. Julie, I'm impressed that you're 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 covering a lot of ground and a lot of different stakeholders, some of them with very, I'll say, nuanced perspectives. Mm -hmm. uh, and I my guess is right, some of these projects can move quickly, and some of these projects have to move slowly, sometimes more slowly than we would like them, but sometimes that is just some of the nuances that we have to deal with. Um, one of the other things that 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 uh, wanted to get your perspective on in particular is the idea of funding for these kinds of projects. Mm -hmm. Has there been a, a there's there's some suggestion that there maybe there's a trend of increasing funding available for these projects? Is that true? And if so, why? And what could what could Europe learn, or what what would you say to 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 European efforts that you've learned from? American funding trends? Great question. Uh, and I think finally, we are in a really good, exciting place in the United States uh, because of what's happened recently under the current President Biden's administration and his infrastructure bill. Um, and also in the state of California as a result of um, a, a, a rapid economic recovery, a more rapid economic recovery after COVID than the state um, you know, expected. So we're facing, you know, sort of the, you know, the horrible problem of budget surpluses and, 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 and that's been exciting. So, you know, through the years of our program and we at Resources Legacy Fund have, have historically always focused on follow the money, create funding sources for our conservation programs, because that is the sort of seed for then unleashing the kind of work we want to do. So, Whereas maybe the politics and the economics didn't line up in the first five years of our program, we still sort of chipped away with our, you know, at the state and federal level with our lob, with our, um, you know, sort of decision makers, our agency leads, um, our elected officials to sort of put in place, uh, uh, develop plans for creating funding and, and developing the coalitions, the NGO coalitions to when the time was ripe to jump in and um, sort of, you know, activate and advocate for that funding. So the good news is with the Biden administration's infrastructure bill, there's just a, you know, what ton of money for mm -hmm. infrastructure, but all of our great partners have been, has done a great job of making sure that that includes dam removal, river restoration, um, all the things, fish passage, all the stuff that we want to, we need the month, you know, the, the programs that we need funded for our, for, for removing our dams. So that's now in place. Awesome. Um, and now the big thing to do is to make sure that implementation happens in a way where the money gets in the ground really quick. So, 
you know, we feel like we really provide that muscle for our groups. Um, and then the same sort of approach in California, see a giant surplus of money, you know, jump in really quick with elected officials to make our case for, you know, dam removal, maybe not saying dam removal, maybe we're talking about infrastructure again. It's like how you talk about it at the right time with the right people. Julie, thank you so much. That's a that's that's a that's a that's a lot of great information. I'm going to assume that if somebody wants to get in touch with you, it would be okay for them to email you and maybe dive into some of the details on this. Please do, because you know I could riff I could riff forever, and I know I don't have the time. <laughs> ah, that's okay. Hey, the whole purpose of this is just to sort of give a surface. Uh, a surface introduction so that maybe some of these 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 threads can be weaved into stronger lines uh, later down. So um, I also want to um, I, we're going to we're going to invite our musical guest uh, Cesar to come up and 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 play one more song. And and while he's playing that song, I, I want everybody to do two things. One, uh, remind yourself that oh shoot, we have that quiz that that's coming up right after his song. And two, if you have a moment scroll through the chat. There's been a great conversation, particularly about stakeholder attitudes, particularly about how we address some of these nuances that we're talking about. Uh, and and even, the, even if we can't talk about everything in this meeting, it's a really good conversation that's going on. So check out that chat. Think about the quiz because it's coming right after we hear another musical interlude from our friend Cesar Rodriguez, take it away. Thank you so much for that incredible music. Oh, wonderful. And those incredible images during which I'm sure that during that song, everybody was thinking back on today, on all the speakers that we heard from, on all the great passion and realizing, remembering that Nija is coming back with, that's right, our Mentimeter final quiz. Take it away. When we did the test run, I won. So now I won't do it. So you have better chances for it. <laughs> I know all the answers. <laughs> so in your chat box, I'm posting now, we go back to menti.com. There's a code you can copy. And then we start with the more questions than before. So Pao will be listing through them. I think you have 30 seconds to answer. Um, three questions or maybe four. Now I don't remember exactly. But um, yeah, so it's very important that you answer correctly and that you answer fast. So we are waiting for players. We have, ooh, okay, come on, join us. Get in there, people, don't be shy. You're just, a, you're just an icon, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, you're just Santa, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> oh, I wish I'd gotten the crab. <laughs> Come on, we're 73, so we're waiting for some more. I give you some more time. Oh, there's a ship. Do we have a fish? 
We have a snail, banana, frog, a fish, anyone? Come on, join us. We have a four leaf clover. I saw what you did there, Ireland. Nice one. I don't know, that dragon could easily pass for an eel. Not that I'm biased. <laughs> okay. Shall we play? Let's do it. Get ready. I'm so ready. Answer fast to get more points. Oh, which dam removal case is that? Oh, oh, there's three choices. We talked about it, if you followed closely. The Salante Dam, the Kangaskoski Dam, the La Roche Kibwat Dam. Ooh. French case. Da -na 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 -na. Da -na 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 -na. Oh. Are we at the next one? Which country removes active hydropower dams? Is it Finland? Is it Spain? Or is it Lithuania? We've heard from all three case studies today. If you listened closely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you know the answer? Do Come I? on. Did you listen? <laughs> I, I listen. Oh, I listened carefully. I also have a cheat sheet notes in front of me. Whoops. Big question. <laughs> Which country created a job position at the ministry to implement dam removals? These are good questions. Was it Spain? Was it Lithuania? Was it the United States? Or was it Finland? Oh, great question. You pick good ones. Oh, picked up. Time is almost up. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Who is going to win? Who is going to win? Oh, this one we see the answer to right away. Yep. Good. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Oh, it was it was the Kanga Kanga Skoski Dam. Beautiful. Oh, oh, it's a pretty close game here. This is a, this is a close one. <laughs> Carolina, you're the winner. Carolina, nice work. Good job, Carolina. Good job. Fantastic. This present, huh? <laughs> Carolina. Now, uh, Carolina, we're going to ask you, and you can you can private message uh, Nija if you want. We're going to ask you for your name and email so we can send you a special e badge uh, that pronounces you Super Dre Cafe uh, trivia quiz winner. Who doesn't want that e badge? You've got it. And so make sure make, you post it on your social media. Everyone's going to ask you what's that about. <laughs> exactly. And you can tell them what that's about. Um, it's about the Dre Cafe. So um, we want to just say we have a, a couple of closing remarks um, as we're as we're as we're at the uh, at the at the 30 mark. Um, first of all, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Muchas gracias for coming with us today for being a part of the first Dre Cafe supporting dam removal Europe. We're going to get to that support in just a second. But a couple things that I just wanted to, to say is, first of all, please turn your cameras on. We want to see everybody for just one last minute. We promise it's only one minute. Oh, look at those faces. Look at those smiling faces. Oh, I love it. So, oh, it's so good to see you all. Ah, oh, new faces, old faces, just fantastic. 
Thank you for all of the great work that you're doing, wherever you're doing it. I want to make a couple of announcements. Don't forget that coming up on Saturday, May 21, is the World Fish Migration Day. One of you, or many of you, are involved in programs before and during and after the big weekend. But remember that we've got the break free online Super Zoom webinar coming up. So please sign up for that. Find out who won the fish flag contest uh, and just come and join us for, again, some great fun enthusiasm and public outreach all based around World Fish Migration Day. Again, that's going to be the, the big event is going to be on Saturday, May 21. So make sure to come to that. Um, we are going to have, by the way, uh, more of these Dre cafes, okay? More of these dam removal Europe cafes. The next one's going to be in June. And to help us plan for that, at the end of all this, um, after a, a few closing remarks, we're going to have a feedback survey. And we would love to get your feedback, both what went great about today, but what, what could be improved about today as well. So we, we want to really want to get your feedback to keep this community coming together, sharing things, having fun, smiling, and thinking at the same time. So in that feedback uh, uh, survey, you can give us your opinions about what happened. Um, but to sort of close out with some final thank yous, some final recognitions of our sponsors, and some final, some final uh, ways that you can continue to support Dam Removal Europe, I'm going to turn it over either to Nija or Pau. I'm not sure who's taking it over for the last bit here. Yeah, we, we switched the roles huh, to confuse you. <laughs> I don't mind. I'm confused most of the time. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, thank you to, to all of our uh, sponsors to support in this events. I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, please, yeah, leave this feedback. We want to improve. We want to meet you in this, um, let's say, more relaxed uh, atmosphere. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's still online, but yeah, let's say that it was like almost like in person. That's relaxed. Um, but yeah, if you want to meet us in person, I would like to, to remind you again that there's a seminar uh, coming up in Lisbon, uh, end of May, and you can also celebrate with us uh, the World Fish Migration Day, which is the May 21st, and that's the Thursday of the seminar, so that's going to be fun. 